Thank you for stopping by my channel to check out this fabric cover book. We are going to create this and decorate it, fill it with two signatures, create the ephemera to fill it and complete it 100% in a little series on my channel. So thanks for stopping by. I hope you join me to finish this. My name is Peg. I call my channel Two Old Pros Mix Media. I hope you'll take a moment and subscribe. And of course, that notification bell will let you know when additional content is uploaded. So to get started, we are going to choose our fabric, which is a cotton butterfly fabric. And I am picking some cardstock, this Astro Bright Husk to create the outside covers for the signatures and probably the inside front and inside back cover. So we shall see how that goes. The paints I've chosen are some yellows and blues and greens that go with the butterflies. These Lindy's medical powders I've never used and I thought we would experiment with those during this book. So let's get started with this coffee box. This is a box that set 96 K cups come in. The weight is great. I'm going to tear it apart or unfold it and take it to my guillotine printer and print and cut two six inch by nine inch pieces and one one and a half inch by nine inch for the spine. Then we will combine those with this black duct tape. I put my duct tape in a U and lightly set it on the cardboard to prevent it from shifting. So you can kind of see I always use duct tape. I always use this technique because if I try to lay it down from top to bottom, everything shifts and gets wacky. So let me show you once again how, how I have feel like I've perfected the way to put these together. So I put my tape in a U and just lightly touch the center of that U down and let the tape kind of fall into place and it prevents everything from going wacky on you. Fold that over and then we'll cut just a couple of small pieces to hold that together on both sides. So we have duct tape on both sides of the spine. and one more piece on this other side, and then we will have the basic construction of this book together. And if you are a coffee drinker and have a Keurig, these are great, great, great boxes. You know, any brand. It's just the weight they use. It's, it's really nice. So there's your basic construction of the book. Now let's pull that fabric out and get it trimmed to an appropriate size to cover this book. And I want to keep about one inch around the outside edge. And the reason I want to do that is I want to make sure you, you don't have to measure it. It doesn't have to be exact. But what you want to ensure is that you have enough fabric. So when you fold it over, it covers enough area that when you lay your inside cover and your outside cover inserts in, that you have a nice fabric border around that outside edge. I'm using Fabric Fusion. Um, Fabri-Tac either glue is great. I'm not sure which one I poured. I think it was the Fabri-Tac. And I just poured it out and spread it with my hotel key card. And now I'm laying the fabric over the top of it and just removing any wrinkle by smoothing it with my hand. And we'll let that dry. And once dry, we'll come back, we'll trim off those corners and start folding that fabric in and gluing that down. And I'm just making a diagonal cut on the corners, but leaving enough there that you get that nice clean edge on the corner. You're just going to wrap this like you would a gift. And I trim the corner or cut that, make that diagonal cut to avoid a lot of bulk there on the corner. Mm -hmm. 
I'm just using that pencil that I have laying to kind of tuck that piece in and make sure it's adhering to the glue, push it down a little bit. And with the glue bottle, I'm putting some glue on the end of that key card and just tucking it underneath that fabric and making sure there's enough glue down to keep that, to keep that holding. I'm going to come back with my glitter glue and kind of go around those outside edges as well. Hey, everything's glued down, everything's in place. One little pass, like I said before, with the glitter glue, make sure everything is adhered properly. Just a reinspection. I'd like to make a book plate for the front of this fabric journal out of an old book cover. So this is just a book cover that I used in another project. As a matter of fact, I'll link the project that was a string journal that I made. I'll link that, pro, um, that project above in case you'd like to, to see that. But this is just uh, the outside of a book and I'm cutting it down into a size that I think will work well on the front of this book cover. And I believe it's about uh, three inches by four inches, three by five, something, something along those lines. But you can measure the front of your own book and determine what size you would like to make this. So I'm cutting that out with my X-Acto knife and I've just measured and drawn my lines with a Sharpie and I'm using that ruler to help keep the um, cut in a straight line, sanding the outside edge. And uh, now I'm going to get ready to cut that window in and I'm using a file folder as my template. So I'm cutting a two inch by two inch little square and I will glue that on to this book page and that will give me a guide on where to cut that window. And I found this was easier than measuring from one side in, the other side in, the top down, etc. I just cut that little window shape that I want and position it on the book cover. And I know exactly where I want to cut that. It just saves a lot of time in engineering. And I will extend my lines with that Sharpie so I know where my cut needs to start and stop and just hold my ruler at the edge of that file folder square. And this is, I'm cutting slow, making sure I don't go past those lines and numerous passes are required to get through that book. And once I'm through, I'll pull out that, that inside and then I will come back with some coarse sandpaper and just make sure that that inside little window area is nice and clean. I will use my X-Acto knife to remove any stubborn little pieces that didn't come off with that first cut. And we'll just clean this up really nice. And there, it's starting to feel, starting to feel nice. Kind of want to position it and look. And now, from a design standpoint, I'm going to decide what I'm going to do with this. And I have these book plates, and I'm going to position one underneath that window. And I think that will will look good. I'm thinking that since we have this butterfly cover, I have the Edith Holden, the Diary of an Edwardian Woman book. And she has a lot of lovely little hand illustrated butterflies that I think will probably look nice in here. And I am just pulling up one of my altered cards. I'll link all my altered card videos above to see um, what we can put in there. And this is just a, a technical error. My disc automatically reformatted. So even though this is the finished piece and what we set out to make, we lost that footage. I say we collectively. I lost the footage. So I am going to redo that 
and create another book plate similar to this using the same technique, but for a future project. So I'm going to texture paste, use the cheesecloth to put the book plate on, all of that, but it is not going to be this exact piece that I'm showing you right here. So the first thing we want to do is add the texture paste to this piece. So I've chosen a stencil and I make my own texture paste. Once again, I shall link that recipe for you to use. And I am pulling it through that stencil with a card. We'll set that aside and let that dry. Once dry, I'm going to um, poke holes in each of the four corners. And I'm doing that to create that effect that this card or this book cover was actually a book plate that was screwed on to the book, which it is to a certain extent, but these screws are not long enough that they will go through the entire front cover. And I am, of course, going to glue that cover on, but put the screws in for an aesthetic purpose. And just sand that texture paste off a little bit to remove any kind of loose or unruly pieces. And now I am just coating with a, an acrylic ink black. I think it's called permanent black. And making sure that I am getting around all of the outside edges because you know, you'll be able to see those once we screw that down. So to, to finish this off nicely, you want to make sure that you have the entire front coated and the back. Now you could leave it there, but I chose to let it dry and sand it down a little bit and add a second color. So you can see now where we're getting that texture that we have on the first one. And we've sanded down that initial color, and now we're going to brush on with a dry brush that second color. Now, for this particular one, I'm going to go with gold because I have no idea <laughs> what I'm going to use this on yet. And I think a black and gold will probably go with just about anything. So I'm just dry brushing on the gold. And I'm going to allow that to dry. or speed that drawing up a bit. And once dry, I'm gonna come back with some sandpaper and just give that uh, a quick sand. There, and now it's ready for the book plate. And this is the process that I went through before I put the um, photo or the Edith Holden image in the window. So with this, I am putting on the book plate and I'm just going to cut down a little piece of catch paper to, to just kind of show you what that looks like. And I may use this when I finish or when I use this or not, I'm not going to adhere it permanently, but I'm just tucking that down inside that book plate, laying that word in the center, cutting a piece of cheesecloth to lay underneath that word plate. And now all of those will be glued down and screwed on. Just like I did here. Now on this one, the Edith Holden image was glued to the back of that window and a sheet of mylar was cut to the size. So the mylar was glued down first, allowed to dry, and then I cut the image slightly larger than the mylar and glued around the edges of that image to glue that image down so it appears like you're looking through glass. And I'm just kind of illustrating the mylar on top of that catch paper here. And of course, the cheesecloth underneath, the cheesecloth gets glued down, then the word plate gets glued to the cheesecloth, and you have these little screws and I'm pulling out of this bag. They go in each corner and on the edges of the word plate. So that completes it. And this is the fabric covered journal. 
This is going to be number one in a series. In the next video, we'll decorate the inside covers and start the signatures. Then we'll get the signatures sewn in and start to decorate the book. My name is Peg. My channel, I call Two Old Crows Mixed Media. I am very happy that you stopped by. I hope you will stay and join me in completing this particular journal. And if you have time, subscribe and the notification bell lets you know when additional content is uploaded. As always, thank you. Love your comments. Bye for